with his bit of the sermon, and I'll continue with mine. He was going to preach on fellowship, and I was going to preach on communion. And so I, I'm going to go with fellowship first, because I want to emphasize how fellowship, um, if we don't have fellowship with Christ, we cannot have communion with each other. First, it must be Christ, and then it all dribbles down into us and everything else around us. So to begin, can we all turn to 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. First John chapter five. Here we go. Okay. Are we there? Okay, awesome. So it says, This is the confidence that we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. So the first point that um, Justin wanted to make and I'll make, for, and I'll make is prayer with, regarding fellowship with Christ. Prayer is so, so, so important. We have to talk to God. We have, have to, have to, have to talk to him. And we have to make our um, needs known to him. We have to praise him. We have to thank him. We have to confess our sins to him. Because without that relationship, then we're not going to be able to grow in love and closer to him, more importantly, to be able to spread that to those around us. And again, as, we sa- as it says here, we know that he hears us in whatever we ask. We know. It's not just like we really hope so. We know he does. When we ask according to his will, we know that he's going to hear us. He's going to be faithful to answer those prayers. So make your... Make your Ooh, what was I going to say? Make your request known to him. Thank you. <laughs> Make your request known to him. Plead with God and be transparent. Um, he, he is our friend and he is also God. So come to him with boldness and reverence because of the mercy that he's given to us to be able to do so. So when we pray, we can do so with our hearts and not just words, which is the most important part. <clears throat> And also, your prayers, um, a lot of the saints in this church have some of the most amazing prayers I've ever heard in my entire life, honestly. Um, and I used to think I'm not the best prayer, which isn't true. Um, I just pray in my way. And as long as I pray with my heart, that's what's important. It doesn't have to be some long, extravagant thing. Um, for example, um, the prayer from Christ himself, the Lord's Prayer, is five verses long. And in Luke, it's three verses when it's reiterated there. So... The one from Christ himself was short, but his heart was there. We could probably know more about Christ's heart than in that verse when he put it all out there for us to see that he wanted the Lord's will to be done. And Or if you're like David in the Psalms when he prays for like 30 verses, it's okay as long as your heart is there. The important thing is that your heart is there and that you want to glorify God through that prayer and make your request known to him and thank him and praise him and confess always. And the one thing that we usually teach our youth is the Acts prayer model or CATS, however you want to figure out that acronym, but it's Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, Supplication. We learned that from Pastor Steve in this church. Um, He helps us a lot with that and loving God and confessing our sins to him so that we may thank him and make our needs known to him. So moral of the story is pray with your heart and everything you have and be transparent. Let him know you. Let the relationship be open. Next. Um, Fellowship is an action. It's not just... um, It's not just coming here and praising God one day or coming to youth group and praising God the other day or whatever small groups we have. Fellowship has to be an action. It has to be a very intentional thing that we do with Christ. We can't just sit around and, and, uh, excuse me, let me get the words together before I start stuttering. All right, good, thank you. (laughs) So, yeah, we can't just ramble on for God. Again, we have to put our heart into it. So we need to do our best to communicate with him and we need to commit ourselves to having that fellowship with him. Because again, without it, we have no relationship and we cannot spread that to those around us. So commit to spending time alone with God. That's super important too. It's great to do it, to do it in the community and to fellowship with each other as we praise him together, but it's very detrimental to our walk with Christ to do it alone. Spend time just you and him 
crying out if you have to, or just praising and thanking and confessing, doing everything you need to do to keep that relationship always strong. And when it's broken, don't lose your mind. It's, we're humans. It's going to happen. However, that's what the cross was for. We can come back because of his mercy, because of that love. So spend time alone and enjoy his company. It's God. <laughs> enjoy it. Um, and then Justin also wanted to um, define fellowship for us. And in the original Greek, it's koinonia. And define it's Christian fellowship or communion with God, or more commonly with fellow Christians. So again, communing with each other, communing with God, more importantly, is the root of fellowship. And without that fellowship with Christ, we cannot move on to have a good community built on Christ. Individually, we must focus on Christ, so collectively we can all do the work for him and love him. <clears throat> and secondly, we wanted to how, so that was how we can fellowship with Christ. But how does God fellowship with us? And it's through his word, reading his word. Um, a quote that I've heard from a pastor once I found that interesting is that if you want God to talk to you, read the Bible. If you want him to talk to you out loud, read the Bible out loud. So again, spend time alone, spend time loving Christ in his word so he can talk to you, so he can grow his relationship more with you. Because the more he reveals himself in his word, the more he, reve he reveals about you. And so you can grow more and sanctify yourself closer to him. It's all about him. That's the point, as, we, as Iyana read in Psalm 115. Not to us, but to you be the glory because of his love, because of his truth, the truth he gives us through his word and the love he gives us through the relationship. It's really important that we do that. And for one final verse, can we turn to Hebrews, please? Chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Most of you guys probably actually have this memorized, but it's always good to remind ourselves. So, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him whom we have to do. Wow. It's pretty dang nice. Um, as I said, he uses the word to um, rend us, I guess you could say, to render us broken almost sometimes, so that as we come, as our sin comes to light, more of his glory comes to light, and we can see um, the sanctification that we can grow with him as he fellowships with us, and we fellowship with him. And I know I said one last verse, but one last, last verse, please. <laughs> And how Justin built his sermon was actually really good, and I appreciated it. Um, he built it more on questions. So he said, you know, how do I fellowship with God? How does God fellowship with us? And the last question is, why do I want to fellowship with God? And we're going to find this in Psalms chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. Awesome. Okay. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hands there are pleasures forever. So why do we want to fellowship with God? Because his presence is fullness of joy. His right hand there are pleasures forever. He will make known the paths for us of our lives. What more do we need from what more do we need? What more could we want? He gives everything. And um, unfortunately, we do, we do, we, we backslide a bit. We, we forget um, who he is and what he brings. But as we spend time with him in his word, in prayer, we'll understand that he does give us the fullness of the joy that um, we so crave. We crave that relationship internally, I think. And it's super important to understand that we want to fellowship with him because he is God. He is who he is. He is everything we need, everything we want, everything we could ever, ever have is in him and found in him. So we need to fellowship with him. 
And um, Justin, if you're watching, I hope it did you justice. That was your bit. And thank you for that. So I'm going um, I'm to transition to the bit that I was originally going to do. It's a community and how we can build that with each other and how can that point us to Christ. So the ideas I wanted to portray was that we have our individual gifts that can contribute to the community as a whole. And another point was going to be the majors and the minors, how to, what's, what they are and what to understand about them. And the last was a strong community. The point of it is to point to Christ ultimately, not each other. So um, I actually want to reread Psalms 115, verse 1 for us so we can keep that in mind. Because again, I kind of want the mantra for our youth group as we teach them to be to give him the glory ultimately, as we said here. So Psalm 15, 115, verse 1. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your loving kindness, because of your truth. Let's, uh, let's keep that in the back of our mind as we go through the rest of this, please. Um, next, can we turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, please? First Peter chapter 4, it's going to be verses 10 and 11. Alrighty. First Peter chapter 4, 10 and 11. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Um, beautiful in its own right, but it's bringing attention to the gifts that God gives us. And one of the analogies that we've used to teach um, the kids in our youth group about our spiritual gifts is a cookie analogy. Because how else to get youth attention than food, right? So um, we, we would say that um, we've all been, God made us a cookie. We've all been given that special cookie made for us, only for us, for nobody else. That cookie is yours, made for you, special. And there are times when we look at other people's cookies that were made for them, we think, man, that one's better. That one looks better. That one tastes better. It's probably just going to be so much better than what I got here. This just isn't enough. I want that one or this one or the other ones. And that's kind of a smack in the face for God, honestly. For, I mean, for anyone, if someone, if someone gave you a cookie and you said, I want the other one, they're like, wow, thanks. I worked hard on that, but do whatever you want, I guess. You know? Super rude. But um, so, I want, so we wanted to emphasize that because a lot of the youth that are, trying to, that are growing up want to find their spiritual gifts or they think, like, that one's better, so I want to work on that one more. When it's not been one that they've been given or not one that is, like, the strongest that they have. An example I would use is that, like myself, I'm not the most emotional guy on the planet, honestly. Um, I'm not super, like, empathetic. But I, I like to think of myself as a voice of reason sometimes for people. And, I, that, and that's, a spiritual, that's a spiritual gift. However, Mr. Jeff, I would say, errs on the more emotional side. He, he helps a lot with people to understand their emotions, what's going on with them, and to how to, like, and point them to Christ through those emotions. I'm not the best at that, to be completely honest, and that's okay. Because that can work complementary, or is that the right word to use? You guys know what I'm saying. But that can work, that can work together. Um, I don't have to be Jeff, and Jeff doesn't have to be me. He shouldn't. He's Jeff. I'm Miguel. We do, we do the roles that God has given us to do. And that's really, really important to understand. So we don't have, for in the community, we don't have like 30 people doing one job that seems really, really good, and like two or three people that are doing another one that's just as important for the church and the community. So... Um, the point is to work hard to find your spiritual gift. Read, read God's word. Seek counsel with those around you as, they, as you may not be the best um, observer of, of yourself, I guess you could say. Um, ask your friends and elders and everyone around you. Be like, hey, what am I good at? How, how can I grow? What are things that I'm good at so I can serve the community in my church and I can serve those around me as well, even more so the way God intended me to do so? Because that's the perfect way to do it. <clears throat> Um, and ultimately, it's to give God glory, to reiterate um, everything, all the gifts that God has given us is to bring him glory and to further his kingdom. So we need to remember that as well. You can't further God's kingdom by doing, you can't further God's kingdom doing something you weren't made to do. It's not going to work. 
we are all in one body. If I'm an elbow joint, I can't do the job of a shoulder joint even though I really want to. It's not going to work. So take pride in the gifts you've been given and um, take joy in them because God made you that way. Um, yes, awesome. And I actually wanted to bring up um, a couple people in the youth group who actually have phenomenal spiritual gifts. And Cassidy, for one, um, happy birthday, by the way, today. Um, and also happy birthday to, to Jahida, my cousin, whoever she is. But aside from that, Cassidy is one of the most like, service-hearted people that I've ever met. She serves with a smile on her face and with just joy all around. She loves nothing more than to just serve and love her youth group and even more so those around her. It's amazing to see and it teaches me even more so to understand a service is about the heart. It's about love. It's not just about doing it because you have to. It's doing it because you want to and you want to glorify God through that. Another person is uh, Samson. Um, unfortunately, we haven't seen him in a little while because um, he has like health risks because of COVID. But uh, we think about you, man. If you're watching, I hope you are. And he has, he's a very loving guy. And anyone he, ta anyone he talks to, it's this immediate friendship. It doesn't matter if he's known you for a second or 30 years. You're friends. So deal with that. He's going to love you forever, which is amazing to just show unconditional love all the time to whoever it is that needs it. And he does it very well. So those are, those are two people that have phenomenal spiritual gifts, and they use them well at a, at a young age, too, which is astounding. So pretty dang good youth group we have, guys. So I want to transition to Romans chapter 15, please. We're going to talk about our majors and minors. Romans chapter 15, verses 5 through 7. Awesome. Okay. Romans 15, 5 through 7. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, accept one another, just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. Um, I think, honestly, I think it's a problem that we have in... Um, in like the Church of America, I guess you could say today, that it's very easy to just leave when you don't like something. When it, frankly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. What's important is that we believe in the triune God sending his son to die for our sins, and he resurrected on the third day to be glorified in heaven. What more? I mean, doctrine is important, theology is important, but ultimately, that is the major that is what the church is for, to bring God glory, the God that we love. So why so often is it easy to just either say, I don't like that, so I'm out, which is not a very good answer to that, honestly. But anyway, it's just focus on the major. Anything aside from that isn't major. Whatever it is that you have a problem with in your church, um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. God matters. That's the point. This community is for God, not for our enjoyment and our pleasure and our um, comfortability. The comfortability we have is in Christ and in his love, not in the other things that the church has to do. We do it all to glorify him, not ourselves. So to kind of emphasize that a little bit more, can we turn to Acts chapter 2, please? Acts chapter 2. Verses 43 through 47. Okay, Acts 2, 43 through 47. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions, and they were sharing them with all, as anyone might have needed. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from the house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being served. So these guys were all of one mind because they agreed on one thing. And I think it's really, actually, I actually think it's pretty cool how in verse 44, all those who I believe were together and had all things in common. Because all things they needed in common was Christ. That was in common. Salvation 
and the love for him and to bring glory to him. That's what they had in common. That's all they needed in common to be able to serve in the capacities that God called them to serve. And how God was, and God was bringing more to them to, to, to himself day by day who were being saved, as it says here. And continuing with one mind at the temple, all together, all focused on him, ultimately. And I, I wanted to use that to emphasize more that we are to be of one mind, and that mind is of Christ. So that is my majors and minors point. I'm going to continue my, to my last point. It's going to be in John chapter 13. So more flipping, please. John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. Alrighty. John 13, 44 and 45. 34 and 35, excuse me. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another, as we sang today, which I didn't see that coming, actually, so that's pretty cool. But um, I, and my point here was that the church should be a very foreign yet welcoming place at the same time. When people that aren't used to Christianity walk into the church, they should notice an air of acceptance and love in Christ. It, there shouldn't be useless squabbles going on or gossip or anything like that. They should walk in and just be overwhelmed by the love of Christ that we share with each other, and we can't wait to give it to somebody else the second they walk through the door. Someone should walk in and be like, whoa, this is kind of weird, but I'm digging it. I'm not going to... It's okay. No worries. It's weird, but we'll see how it goes from here. So let's, let's do our best to create that atmosphere, to create that community that welcomes and loves anyone who walks in the way Christ would. Meet them where they are, not wait for them to be the right person or the right Christian to come in as they are, as we were when God um, took us. Um, and I think to do that, I think uh, just as an example, how are you has become more of a greeting than the actual question is, I think, today. If I walk up and say, how are you, it's just a longer, natural way of saying hello. And that's not what it is. It's a question. So answer the question truthfully. I'm not saying you always have to be in a bad mood and say, you know, oh, man, just everything stinks. No. Um, but if you're having a bad day, be transparent. Tell your community, we're here to love you. We're here to support you the way Christ would. So be like, hey, I'm not having the best day, so pray for me. Awesome. That's what the community is for, to build each other up to Christ. So don't let how are you just be a greeting. Let's be intentional with the relationships we have here and those that come to the door. Be intentional with getting to know them. So even more so, so they can know Christ better through us. To so be intentional to build up encourage and be accountable to one another because we are to be a community of one. So we move on to application because that was a lot of words, but let's make it a little bit more concise so we know what to do when we get home. Um, one thing in application was to be diligent to find out what our spiritual gifts or gifts are so we can use them for the furtherance of the community and God's kingdom. Ask around, read, pray, do whatever you can to find out what it is your role God made you to be in the church, in the community, so that you can serve him and build the kingdom up. Secondly, um, understand what is major and what is minor. God is major. Everything else is minor. That's pretty much it. Know what's major, know what's minor. Know what matters, know what doesn't. Next, spend, God, or spend time with God in prayer and in Bible study imperative. We cannot do anything without the fellowship. We cannot grow the community if none of us are growing closer to Christ. It's imperative, necessary, important to pray and to, and to study your word. And this is for all of us, me as well, obviously. Um, we need to spend time with him so that we can grow in our relationship more with him and knowledge of him. So that, again, we can spread that to those around us and to bring him glory. Next, strive to make a community that points people to Christ, ultimately. People, again, should walk in, feel the love, and be like, wow, this is of him. This isn't of us. We're, all, we're not all like super nice people. And we are super nice people. You know what I'm trying to say. Like, God uses us to portray his love. They'll know we are Christians by our love because he gives that to us. We can pour it out to those around us. 
Our community should point to Christ through our fellowship with him as we grow more to him, or closer to him. So, to reiterate, Psalm 115, verse 1, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your loving kindness, because of your truth. Everything is for him, for his glory, to build his kingdom, to build his light on this world. Let's remember that and strive to do so. That is all.